Sky Blue Fans TV. For the fans, by the fans. Very good evening to you. Welcome to another edition of Sky Blue Fans TV on this wet and windy Thursday evening. No Miles again tonight. He's uh, got work commitments and he's uh, very busy doing uh, a lot of stuff uh, behind the scenes. So uh, I'm here along with Claudio and we've also got Paul. Um, we're going to bring them in now, actually. We've got quite a lot to talk about. So we bring Claudio in. Good evening, Claudio. Good evening. How are we? You all right? <laughs> Feeling rather jolly. Good, good. It's very wet and windy out there. Yeah, um, it is. So we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk Huddersfield. We've got a Huddersfield fan coming on as well, um, and then we've got spot the ball competition, and then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about Larry Lloyd, who passed away sadly today as well. And Claudio's going to um, talk a bit, a little bit about Larry Lloyd because it was more of his era than mine, if you like. He's seen he's seen him in action more than, than I did. But here's another person who did see him in action. Uh, Paul Hughes. Good evening, Paul. Hello. Evening, uh, evening, Claudio. Evening, Ken. Evening. You all right? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Larry Lloyd in a minute because you've seen him in action, didn't you, as well? You know, I'm old enough to have seen him in action, yes, yes. <laughs> I've probably seen him a couple of times, not many, uh, not as many as Claudio, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have got uh, a school fan coming on as well a bit later on. Um, it's going to talk about our. Uh, our game tomorrow, which we'll be travelling to. Paul will be going there as well. Uh, we'll be meeting up with him uh, away at Huddersfield. Important game where we need three points to stay in the mix. Uh, and then we obviously got a home game against Cardiff on Monday, on Bank Holiday Monday. So, And we're all going to spot the ball as well. Let's put the spot the ball up before we go any further um, so we can get your answers to come in. Today's spot the ball is there. Um, it's also the game against Wolves again, that epic game against Wolves. There's only one ball. There's no two balls. There's only one to find. Um, where do you think it is, Paul? Um, no. I'm going obviously no. I'm going to go six. You're going to go six, okay. Claudio? Three. Three. Oh, right, yes. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to intersect where everybody's eyes are looking. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's looking all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, get your uh, get your answers in, please. You can win yourself a Scarborough Fans TV mug, uh, as usual. Um, so we'll be showing it up again later on. Um, just a couple of things before we move on. Uh, the George and John statue appeal, of course, that's uh, gaining momentum, if you like. Uh, but they still need more money. So as much money as possible, please try and raise. They haven't quite got there yet. Uh, there's the account details where you can donate, even as, a little as a fiver would do. That's fine. Uh, let's get that statue up as soon as possible. And uh, it's coming along nicely, but they still need a little bit of cash if possible. Um, no Whelan, Friday the fifth of April, of course. We had we had um, we had a person on on the last show talking about the No Whelan. Uh, it was Lee actually who came on and spoke about the No Whelan show. Uh, and basically, he's running it from the tavern uh, Friday, the 5th of April. Uh, it's £10 a ticket. Uh, it's raising money for charity as well. So that'd be a good night. We've got a comedian on as well that night as well. So that should be a very good night. Um, that's coming up Friday, the 5th. So this is all dates for your diary, if you like. Um, MNA, uh, Jack, who comes on our, our show now again, uh, he's fighting in Coventry. Um, you can get your tickets now. Um, uh, ultratickets.co.uk so uh, that's where you get your tickets for that okay right let's get going uh we're gonna start let's start with larry lloyd who uh sadly passed away where the news came in uh today um what's your memories of larry lloyd then claudio because i only seen him a couple of times because it was sort of uh you know, middle sort of 70s, mid to late 70s, wasn't it? I presume he was playing, if I remember. Uh, so I only actually seen him in action a couple of times. I didn't 
seen him a lot of him because I was only a young a young kid then. But you've seen him a lot more than I did. You, so you know more about him. So <laughs> take that. You make me sound like <laughs> eighty years old or something. It's a well, very un- about like, I mean, I've read about. Him. I know he's a fantastic player for Liverpool and went on to win the European Cup for Notts Forest. But what was your memories of him for Carl? Well, it's a very uncompromising centre half, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, just a solid centre half. I mean, he, at Liverpool, he won the league with them. He won the UEFA Cup with them as well. But the, the yeah. problem was he didn't really fit in to the new regime. Once Shankly left, uh, Paisley wanted to bring in Phil Thompson and uh, he to replace him, basically, because they wanted to play a more continental style of football because they obviously wanted to win the European Cup. Yeah. And, I mean, in 1973, uh, Lloyd played every minute of every match for Liverpool that season, 54 games he played every single minute. So when these players of today go on about... Moaning. Yeah. How hard it is. It's not hard at all compared to what they played on as well. And, you know, I mean, obviously that's why his knees were shot in the end, basically. But, yeah. you know, and he came to us and he was a bit heavy. And uh, he came for about 240000 It was a record fee for Coventry. Mm. Uh, Mick Maguire was supposed, well, was sold. But Jim Holmes, Jim, Jimmy Holmes was meant to be sold as well. And that fell through. And basically it left us in the red for years. It almost bankrupted the club. So that was well. 74. And then, of course, he left in 76. Jimmy Holmes left around about the same time then. And, yeah. uh, and Larry Lloyd went on to Forest to win the, the league and lift the European Cup. Um, mm. I think Brian Clough, different level, wasn't he? He could, get, you know, he could turn anything into gold, that bloke, with some of the players he used to pick up. But uh, mm. yeah, it was just a compromising centre-half, solid, decent for Coventry. Uh, the problem was after the second season, I think the first season he played about 38 matches and then the second season he hardly played at all. And then by the start of the third season, he was shot and we got rid of him because he was just classed as injury prone. And um, he went, but, on, went on to win the European Cup with Notts Forest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Paul, I mean, what's your memories of him, of, of Larry? I remember him getting a great heady goal into the West End. So yeah. uh, that, that's probably my... Um, uh, biggest memory, headed goal. Um, as I say, he was, as Claudio said, uncompromising and yeah. did carry a bit of weight. I think he fueled himself with um, from the local tavern. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, everybody liked a beer then, didn't they? I think, um, they yeah, used to it's a bit different sort of the game, didn't they? In, in those and a fag, um, yeah. in those days. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, it, I remember him sort of. That and then, as Claudio said, he was he was an in and out player, and it was. Um, but you know, Brian Clough, for exactly as Claudio said, he he picked up Ken Burns, who was a centre forward for Birmingham City, and said, "Ah, put him at the back." And him and Larry Lloyd and um, a couple of others just were this defensive backbone that went and won one if what a league championship, up team league cups, and uh, a couple of European cups. I mean, unbelievable. Because Larry yeah. Lloyd, Larry Lloyd at Liverpool was playing centre half with Tommy Smith, mm. so yeah, so obviously they wanted to change that, and that's why we ended up signing Larry. But yeah, it was just a tough, tough centre half, and uh, it's a real shame. Seventy five's no age nowadays. No, no. I, I, I saw him play a couple of times at Liverpool against us because mm. um, up at up at Anfield, I think we got one draw and. Uh, most of the time, I went home crying with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that was my experience of Anfield. Uh, but yeah, in those days. Yeah, yeah, very sad, very sad news. And uh, we send our condolences, obviously, to his family uh, and friends at this time. At that time. But uh, yeah, I mean, no age, and uh, another one sadly passed away, unfortunately. Um, okay, let's talk about Wembley tickets. They're on sale. Um, we're getting a few comments coming in about Wembley tickets. Yeah, I'll put this one up. Uh, underage <laughs> cough fan. Wembley tickets was a nightmare today. Well, I can tell you my experience. Yeah. And all I can say is use a laptop or a computer because my phone was, oh, dear. My fingers are too fat for the dots, <laughs> basically. Yeah, so that's I've, the problem. Trying to choose a seat, yeah. Yeah, I'll get the first seat because I was desperate to get the same seats on the halfway line just above the Royal Box. I got them yeah. in the end. Yeah. And every time I picked my ticket, I then went to pick Lucas' ticket and it kept saying I'll pick the seat 
but one. I can't leave an empty seat. I'm thinking, no, I'm pressing that seat. And I was, I won't swear, but I was. Yeah. I needed three tickets. It then put me into, basically, somehow I picked seat one, three, and five. I mean, I was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely not. Nice. But I eventually got one, two, and three. But I had to buy two tickets. I logged out my phone, went into the office, and went on the computer then and logged back in again. I had to wait in the queue for about only about five minutes. It wasn't yeah. too long and got the tickets. But then, of course, I couldn't operate the mouse. For some reason, the mouse decided that it wanted to be super fast. It kept, <laughs> the cursor kept going off the screen. This lad next to me went, do you want me to do it? I went, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just do it because I've had enough of it now. <laughs> and yeah. It was, yeah. All, it was all good in the end. not all ideal trying to end. do that on your phone. No. Uh, when you try I to should, expand it and it's... It, it was the same last year, and I should have learned my lesson from last year. I don't know why I didn't. Yeah, but yeah. And of course, as I'm about to start, a guy turns up with a gas delivery, gas bottles. I went, he's knocking the door, it's pouring down with rain. And I says, Yeah. He says, uh, gas. I went, I'm just about to buy Wembley tickets. He goes, on sale <laughs> now. He went, Oh, hold on a minute. He went in the van and tried to buy his. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Then so mind about your gas, mate. I'm on my ticket. Yeah, so, yeah. so Claudio, are you next to the uh, United fans then, as you were for Luton? Yeah, we just got the, the bit of the, the black uh, flag thing, whatever they use, the separators. I'm right next to the United fans. So, yeah. oh, you're a brave man. You're a brave man. So can yeah. you see the players as they're going up to lift the cup and stuff like that? Is that the way they walk up? Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's why we picked it for the player final. Because you thought they'll come up and they'll be right underneath us. And... Um, and the, the price is it's it's reasonable. How much, and how much was your ticket for where you are? Uh, Sixty five. All oh, right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. I mean, last year it was thirty eight because I bought a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought I ain't risking it this year. Oh, it's gone down. <laughs> <laughs> it okay. came up senior citizen, so I bought it. I thought, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll I chance to be out. Of and of course. <laughs> Uh, Gordon Tully, who can't go, and generously gave me his details to get Keith a ticket from Canada. So, right, Gordon uh, Tully Art, he, he watches us a lot. Thanks, mate. I'm, I know Keith is oh, he's over the moon, absolutely over the moon with that. Yeah. Seeing as he bought his flight, hotel, bought the train and everything, he hadn't got a ticket. So, yeah. so that's brilliant. Uh, good evening, Vicky. How are we? Good evening, Ken. Sorry about that. No, no, no very, very wet and windy out there, I think. It's the internet's playing havoc with everybody tonight. Yeah. So, uh, did you get your ticket? Did you get a Wembley ticket? No, not yet. Not yet. Because um, yeah, because Bob's not got a season ticket, so I'm gonna if I can, right. if I can hold my nerve, I'm gonna hold out till next Thursday and get them both together. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, there's plenty of time. They've given quite a window, isn't there, to, yeah. to get? It's unusual. They're not, they don't normally give that much time, do they? But um, we've got till next Thursday, haven't you, to to get them? Yeah. Uh, so everybody was yeah. rushing like to get them today when there's you've got a whole week. Yeah. Uh, um Paul, you're still looking for a ticket, aren't you? I am indeed, yes. So there's yes. anybody out there with a spare one, which I'm sure that we you never know. Um, oh, I would welcome that. <laughs> do you do you think I mean do you agree with the way they do it with the point system and, and the season tickets? Obviously the you haven't got enough points to get your ticket, that's why you're gonna miss out on, on the point system. But but you're okay with the point system as it is. I I think it's fair because as I say I'm 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 a Coventry fan that lives a long way away. It's uh, mm. I work away from home sometimes, so it's not always the it's, the it's not the brightest move for me to say to my wife. By the way, I've been away all week. Do you mind if I just go to the football? So um, <laughs> I, I you know that's I've kind of done my time of uh, following them home and away in my youth. Uh, so I mean that, and I I I, I honestly look at it. And it, it means that I won't be able to, it disadvantages me. But I think the way the point system works, it seems fair. I think there's a lot, um, they've given plenty of time for people. Um, so for me, reading the rules of sort of the, you know, it goes, I think it open after it's season tickets, it's um, 50 points, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it means that you've got an account, you've got to have had an account before, which I do have, but to say I don't have the points because... I mean, getting the tickets that way. No, for me, I, for me, I thought you're always going to disappoint people. Um, it means a club of our size, because um, someone was saying this about. I think it was on um, on, on uh, CWR where they were saying about well, um, 
you know, we've only got 30, you know, should we have the semi-final at Wembley? Shouldn't it be at somewhere like Hillsborough? I was, I was at that one. Um, it, it was, um, but as somebody made the point, if you go to Hillsborough, then you get a fraction of the tickets. The, yeah, uh, if you go to Wembley, for a club like ours, everybody who goes will get a ticket. And I think that's the fairest way. Yes. You know, um, Manchester United, obviously, you know, is it 50,000 season tickets they've got or something? Yeah, they're going to do an incredible job trying to, uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of fans disappointed uh, from yeah. the Man United perspective. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's the best way to do it. I mean, Claudio, you did say, I mean, there was all sorts of rumours that, um, you know, the people with the uh, £500 tickets would get two and this, that and the other. But in the end, I think the club just went with, as you said, didn't they, just one ticket and that was it. It's the fairest way, wasn't it? There's no other yeah. way of doing it, I think. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, I said it the other night, the Premier package is, if we go up, you get a free ticket next yeah. season. You don't need to have two tickets for a, yeah. a day mm. out at Wembley. You, you, mm. That's your reward. That's the gamble. This is a totally separate thing. And actually, a season ticket only guarantees you your seat at the home game. Because yeah. the, if any football club could decide how they want to distribute away tickets. You know, some some clubs don't even use season tickets. It's just basically based on points. You know, so it's, um, yeah, I think it's the best fair way. Um, and the fact that we've, I mean, we're lucky in some ways we've only got 19,000 season tickets and 34,000 tickets that, mm. to buy. That's just, that's great for us as a club, I think. And hopefully everyone who's been the last two or three years will have a chance of getting a ticket. Yeah, well, I think well, obviously, all the season ticket holders should get one, and then hopefully, you know, hopefully, the, the fans that have been to uh, majority of the games or got enough points, obviously, will get one as well. But uh, be interesting to see how many. Um, I, I think I know a couple of people have been put off because of the Sunday, uh, they, they would go okay to go on the Saturday, but now they're not going on because it's a Sunday for work commitments and stuff like that, they can't go on the Sunday or for whatever reason. So well, I, I'm sort of sure some of you know Joe Chamberlain. She's um, she writes quite a lot on the, the Facebook page and the forums. She goes home and away. I yeah. think she's doing the London Marathon, right? She, yeah. uh, because she's quite quick. Uh, she went, she's she's going to leave herself enough time to finish and then get across to Wembley. Well, just carry on running. Carry on running to Wembley. Well, she's <laughs> carry on running. But, <laughs> I don't know if she's going to carry on running, but yeah, she's definitely. Uh, um, going to get there somehow so that's that's, a, that's an achievement and a half that is if she's doing that yeah that's the problem with the people that, and there's quite a few people from Coventry that do enter the um, the the, the, the London Marathon so at the end of the um, day they, well, there might be people who miss out shall I get more comments up about tickets yeah there's got, a few more comments coming up yeah uh, so we've got Rob Nichols no problems at all I was on at 12.02 had tickets all purchased five minutes later uh, Lee Beckett didn't have an issue getting my Wembley tickets. Uh, underage car fan just didn't want to work online today. Odd as it wasn't anything different today than normal. Guess it was the amount of people logging on at once. Mm. Uh, it was a lot quicker, though, even though the, I mean, the second time I went on, the queue said 4,000 and something, but it went on. down very quick, didn't it? Yeah, really quick. It, it wasn't too bad at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Kenatomo, it's very clear the site for tickets are designed for PC, not mobile device or phone, which is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, my That's mate's good. a Liverpool supporter, and he goes to quite a few games, and I watched him get his European tickets. I couldn't believe how quick it was on his phone. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. I thought, well, oh, that seems stress-free. Within <laughs> two minutes, he was down to the payment bit. I thought, That's, that was really good. So maybe, you know, maybe that's what we need to look at. Yeah. Uh, Samantha Smith, even on my laptop, it was still difficult. The site is, was very slow. Um, I don't know if that's to do with the traffic. I'm, you know, I'm not, in, yeah. Um, Sky Blue Sam, plenty of seats in the top tier blocks, but lower tiers are only single seats only. Is the lower tier, is that the cheaper, slightly cheaper seats then? Um, yeah, yeah, depending on where you are. They are beyond the goal, but if you go around, around the corner a little bit and along the side, they do get a bit more expensive. Um, the cheaper right. ones are dull, I think. Uh, West Sky Blue, the way they've done the tickets, the best way so far means cough more cough fans than a mate from the pub. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah, Sky Blue Sam, problem is at Wembley when you sell a ticket reseller selling 12 
1,215 tickets for Cobb semi final online for £2.50 a ticket. 250. 250, not £2.50. 250, sorry. <laughs> That's um, cheap. Uh, you've got to watch with these online stuff because a lot of them yeah. are scammers anyway. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love I love the re responses um, where um, people. Well, you start caught, asking them questions about what. Yeah, I've, I've got tickets for Wembley. You know, have you got the Cantona end? <laughs> things like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob Nichols, kind of tickets in blocks 10, 11, 12, all gone. Club now selling remaining seats in twenty five, twenty six. Normally held back for pay at the gate. Wow. Oh, that's the Cardiff. Okay. Uh, and it will drive up, won't it? I think attendance is because if if you're like on sort of twenty points or something, and you think I need to get to fifty, you buy tickets for the remaining home games, and you're there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's Ryan, one ticket per per uh, per season ticket holder, and if you've been to five games in the last three seasons, you can go, which is great. It's true. I yeah. think they've done it the fair way. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't think there's yeah. At the end of the day, I think it is the fairest way. You're always going to upset somebody along the way, isn't you? And there's nothing, uh, you know, there's nothing you do about it, really. And uh, so, as you say, we're lucky. We've, we've, we've only got 19,000 odd season ticket holders to please. Which and, we have. And, yeah. bef and before the rumours start, the supporters' clubs do not get 400 tickets each or anything <laughs> ridiculous like that. They've and, got, to, just remind them, they've got to have a supporters number, haven't they, before they get yeah, a ticket? Yeah, and so they're not actually doing anybody out of a ticket anyway, because you've got to have a season ticket to get a ticket. So yeah. it's just a, it's just an easier way of doing it. And there's nothing stopping people joining supporter groups. Exactly. Yeah, I, I just find it odd that people moan about them. We'll join one. Yeah. Bedworth and yeah, Leek are fantastic. Southam are fantastic. Like, fantastic. Yeah. Um, the rugby, Mark's brilliant. Um, London, of course. Uh, there's quite a few now. Leamington, Warwick. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're all uh, we're all doing the same thing. Yeah, it benefits, it benefits to join the supporter club definitely because uh, you know you, you get a chance to uh, also you get a chance to meet people as well. And, you know, more fans and lo local fans. You might even be able to uh, you know get a lift and, together to away and, games and stuff like that. And the men and women <laughs> who sort out the tickets, it's a, you wouldn't believe. The, you know, we've had an incident today where. Uh, Andy from Leamington Warwick, who <laughs> someone's a bit of a cock up because obviously you can have people's names in your account. Somehow, someone's bought a ticket under his name. He's gone to get his ticket and can't get his ticket at the minute. Oh, because somebody it, purchased it. Yeah. Yeah. Purely, probably by accident because he's probably just whoever's done it, he knows where he's sitting, even though he's not got his ticket. And he knows the last four digits of the credit card used, but he, he needs to find out if the club who's actually got the ticket. So right. he went. To, he went to get his own ticket and couldn't get it because somebody, could, somebody could manage his tickets. So that's probably accidentally just bought it. Yeah. Because you, you know, in the panic of buying the ticket, it probably just clicked on, you know, continue, 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 whatever. And uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Andy was getting tickets for other people. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's great, isn't it? So the bloke who's doing a lot of the work ends up now can't find his ticket. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, end of the day, I'm sure the club will sort that out for him. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of them genuine, probably genuine mistakes that can easily be made, especially if you if you're doing it on the phone and stuff. Uh, David Granigan, evening all. Hopefully everyone is okay. Hope everyone got their Wembley tickets. I've managed to get mine. Um, so there's a lot of hellos at the very top of these messages. Which um, hello to everyone. There, there's too many to get through. Yeah, um, <laughs> and. Uh, it's like collective power, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shout out to CC, CCSC admin. Amazing job all season, says Wes, yeah? Yeah, it, they're getting better. Yeah. They are get, definitely getting yeah. better. Well, they have got a phone line, I believe, in there now, haven't they? So you can actually ring the ticket office, and it does ring. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't guarantee anybody will answer it, but it does ring. <laughs> well, well, Andy was trying, and he couldn't get through. So. <laughs> I have, I mean, I have that's... an occasion where he has picked it up. Um, but, but you know... It's very rare, but well, um, on, on this occasion, he probably needs to go in and sort it out. I think, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's indicative of the club, isn't it? Under King, it's, you know, we have got f more and more professional, and you can't, you, you know, it's evolution rather than revolution, but you can see changes, can't you, all over the place? Yeah, you know, whether 
be the whether it's the the shop, the training facilities, the ticketing. We are we're getting there. You can see progress. I think. Um, oh, one hundred percent. The club is interacting with fans. It, it's just, you know, they will never be spoken about ever again. You know, it's so much better than under them. And then, I know, I, yeah, and I noticed Doug King was at the uh, open event for the uh, GSBs mm -hmm. as well, weren't he? Um, I mean, that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? You know, he's having pictures with, with the kids and everything, and, and the obviously all the players that were available that weren't on international duty were there, and it was a very successful event, apparently. And we've, and we've done a lot in such a short time as well. Mm. Yeah, so it's, 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 yeah, it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant. Um, well, you can sit on the pitch and off the pitch, and that's part of you. You know, yeah. that's why I believe now. You know, when they have this, do you remember? Um, oh, for goodness' sake! If I if I could only remember names, that project uh, Premier League. You know, about fifteen years ago. Um, yeah. Yes. And Rand, Ray Ranson and all Ranson. of that. that yeah. I mean, that just seemed to me like an Easter egg. You know, got loads of chocolate and silver stuff on the out, and there was nothing in the middle. There was you feel right. now it's infrastructure and there's there's. You know, you can see the building blocks, and that a big, a big part of that's got to go to Robbins as well. You know, just oh, yeah. all that stuff behind the background and the medical staff. It's just everything seems to be improving. Yeah, oh, hundred percent from where we were. We're we're, uh, we're we're seventeen years into the three-year Premier League project. Oh, aren't yeah, we? we are. Yeah, probably <laughs> Premier League. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> right now, listen, we've got the. Uh, We've got Mark the Huddersfield fan in the waiting in the wings. We're going to talk to him very shortly. Uh, we're just uh, talked about our game tomorrow, uh, but we've got to spot the ball. So uh, let's uh, bring that to your uh, attention. There's there there it is. Now, Vicky, you did you had that a go yet? Yeah, where do you think that is? Uh, eighteen, please. Oh, you're going eighteen. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Get your guesses in uh, as normal. There's only one, there is only one ball out there. That's the game against Wolves, the FA Cup game against Wolves. Um, get your guesses in. You can win a Scarborough Fans TV mug. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Can, we'll we'll, we'll can show can you. I ask a quick question. Just it's only, yeah. it is about with uh, something we haven't discussed there, and I, you may want to discuss it later. With it being moved to a Sunday, I'm thinking of the Luton game and. I just managed to get the last train absolutely packed going north. I mean, yeah. is, does that make Sunday even worse than? The, well, the I'm they're, just saying, they're saying there's train. Yeah, they, left, they left a lot of people stranded last year. Uh, the railways didn't they? they? had to put bus services on and and all sorts. So I wouldn't trust the, the train. I'm not going by train. I'm, we got a minibus going down, so mm. I'm not going by train. So I don't think you, you can't, you can't, you can't, can't trust. trust you get down there, no, get down there, no problem. But yeah. getting back, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. You've got obviously all the Man United fans going back as well. You've got uh, there's Liverpool are playing, believe it or not, in London. They're playing Fulham. Oh, good grief! Could you believe Liverpool and Man United on the same day? They're, they're heading back the same way. They're heading back north. It's all going through Euston Station, isn't it? It's yeah. all going to go through Euston. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. And then you've obviously got the the back end of the London Marathon, all the people that have come to see that and stuff. So uh, it's going to be an absolute nightmare on the Sunday, which is why I was hoping it to be on the Saturday. But mm. we, we um, unfortunately, we're on the Sunday. But, you know, it's one of those. It can't be out. But for whatever reason, they decided Sunday. They decided Sunday. And that was it. It seems very strange to me. But um, that lady yeah. might have a better chance of getting home if she runs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just go to the match and then run home. It's probably quicker than going on the train. <laughs> we could uh, we could ask Mark when he comes on because Huddersfield have played in quite a few playoff finals, so you must know a way out. <laughs> <laughs> Big way out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we're going to have a little advert break now. We're going to come back uh, and then we're going to talk Huddersfield. Mark's waiting in the wings. We'll bring him in and um, about, our game, about our game tomorrow. And we've got a quiz. Yes, Claudio's got an expert quiz on Huddersfield as well. So, test our knowledge. <laughs> Okay, we'll be back in a minute.
Sky Blue Fans TV for the fans by the fans. Hello, welcome back to Scarborough Fans TV. Um, we're talking uh, Huddersfield now, and we've got a Huddersfield fan uh, waiting in the wings, Mark, from Huddersfield Town. Let's bring him in. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. Good evening, boys, ladies, gentlemen. How are we all doing? Not all too right. bad, yeah. mate. Not too bad, mate. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's a slight delay, but we can, can hear good. you loud and clear. That's because he's in um, Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah. We'll blame yeah, the weather. We'll blame the weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's, tell it's us about it. Yeah, it's um, it down. yeah well, it's the same here, mate. It's absolutely it's teeming down here. It's wind, rain, all sorts. So, um, tell us about Huddersfield then. Um, what's you know what's happened in your season and how you think the season will end in your view, because. Um, you know, you've had a bit of a few strange results, haven't you? So, tell, tell us in your tell us about Huddersfield because tell us what's gone wrong for you this season. I think lots of things have gone wrong for Huddersfield for quite a few years. You know, it it's probably like a commentary role. There'll be loads of stuff for the moves, stadiums, and whatever else, and things like that, stuff in the background. Um, so I think town have been battling relegation for so long, but I think this year is going to be the year where it finally succumbs. Um, I was speaking to Claudio earlier this week, and I think after the Rotherham game, that's for the first time this season where I might like, actually like, we're uh, really close to relegation. Hmm. And and what do you blame that on? Do you blame that on the manager or the board or who who would you put the blame on for that? Or the players? In the problem is the board's changed a few times. So obviously, when Town were in Premier League, a story what mm. many people don't know about is the owner got really poorly. Um, yeah, try selling the club, sold it to somebody who basically couldn't really finance it properly and. The, the old owner then having to come back in and hold it the floor and then we've obviously got a new owner taking over last season um who bought the club in eight days literally town were due to go into administration so this guy had eight days to buy the team um and yeah so we had neil warnock start last se- well yeah kevin last season did a miracle mm-hmm. like he does because it's a cheat code in it it's neil warnock um start this season and then for some unbeknown reason Darren Moore got a job. <laughs> and that's it. I think Darren Moore just he might be a real nice person and stuff like that in real life, but in real life you've got to in football, sorry, you've you've got to get results. And I mm-hmm. think he stayed probably about four or five games longer than he should have done. Because there were three games within a couple of weeks, which were massive, massive games. And we drew them all when we should have won. I went to Blackburn, mm-hmm. I went to QPR, over to Pete, uh, Plymouth, and we should have won those games and we didn't. And then this is the time now where it's out there going, we've got somebody new in, we've got a good result at Watford. And then the last two games against West Brom and against uh, Cardiff, it's inexcusable. You know, it's player attitude getting tactics wrong. I mean, we've not had any red cards for ages when we had two in two games. You know, it, uh, two in three games, sorry. And so, yeah, in a nutshell, it's kind of just been an undercurrent for so long. Mm. And, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to give this season. So, you, you really think you're going down this season? This is it, yeah? 
Oh yeah, I'm at I'm a easy. I mean, to be honest, my circumstances in September will change because I'm going to be a uni student and whatever else, you know. But I'll still be there with town, um, mm. supporting them in whatever league they're in. I mean, I was there at the time when town had no money, no stadium, pretty much, and we're days away from having liquidation back in nineteen ninety seven, something, something stupid like that. I can't remember where it was, you know. So. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen terrible, terrible times with town, and we're not. It's not going to be terrible times. The new owner, he's got all these plans. He's making the academy back again and stuff like that, and he's sticking to his guns in what he's wanting to do. But because we've seen so many changes and so many directors changing and so many managers coming in and out, I think you need stability. And I said this to Claudio last week. Mark Robbins down at. Coventry. I've met Mark Robbins a couple of times with a town manager and he's really, really good. And mm. the fact that he's down there doing such great work, you know, you know, it it's it's testament to how good he is as a manager. And you know, he's he's brought through really Mark, good players. Mark can, ask, Mark, can I ask you a quick question? Why do you why don't you think it happened with for Mark Robbins at Huddersfield? Because he seemed to have everything there the infrastructure the, was it was it the owner or what, what did, why do you think he didn't click there as he as he, he clicks but cov i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm not sure whether it like one of his first proper managerial roles or something or but for some reason it just it just never clicked i mean mm. town fans just want people to put effort in into whatever position if you're going to be rubbish but you put effort in and being rubbish then that's all right because you're putting effort in but mark robbins i think it, it were 2008 you were our manager so you're going back what 14 years ago so i think it was i still haven't got over it mark by the way you're nicking him still haven't got over it but, so, fair play to you. <laughs> yeah but no it was um, yeah, so I, I think that's it. I just think it was first role. I think we're probably still in the League One mm. at the time. Yeah, we'll have been. And I don't know. I just think I just think he just mm. didn't click. And I think at the time, had Dean Oyle just taken over? I'm not sure. I can't remember if Dean had just taken over or not. But again, it's it's just been turbulent for such a long period of time. I think we might have even had the old town owner at the time, you know, so town managers at the time were just one in, one out, one in, one out, you know, we had Powell and Andy Ritchie and, you know, we, we had all kinds of people coming through the door. It was just, you didn't know what you're happening one minute to the next, so, but hmm. I'm well. still here, so that's good. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still back in, but, you know, it, it's just bonkers, isn't it? Football's just crazy. How do you go from playoff, playoff runners up to where you are now in the space of 18 months? That's what I find. You know, because you did so well when you got to play the final and you played Forest, and and obviously they beat well, you. Got, when we got robbed by John Moss, yeah, in the playoff final <laughs> when everyone does. Yeah, so, how, like, so how have you gone from that in, in 18 months to where you are now? No idea, no <laughs> idea. Um, because the squad between the playoff final and the next season wasn't too different, but I just think it was just a disastrous start, and disastrous starts lead to disastrous mentality. And you know, I mean, players are falling out of love with each other, and you know, there's issues in changing room and X, Y, and Z. And um, but that playoff run, what people won't realize is. Out of 14 seasons, we've been in 12 relegation battles and we've had one playoff final against uh, Forest, which I don't know if any Forest fans are watching this, but stop complaining about VAR because it's what got you promoted. <laughs> Chuffing hell. Um, well, you, you came to so, our but place, That's a bugbear. You... We keep moaning about VAR, but you all loved it when you got... <laughs> I mean, you came to our right. place 
And I yeah. mean, I was, I was surprised you um, were as high as up the table. But I just think you were meant to help them. It's just like, I mean, I think you went to. And, and uh, yeah, I think it was a tough low score that. Because you, you scored oh, that. Is it tough yeah, yeah. scored that, that so, goal against I, us? I don't know if you. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you know. Um, so in that game when he scored, um, a, a lad who uh, a massive town fan called Daz, he died uh, a couple of days before. Mm. So he he picked up his shirt and held it out and stuff like that. And Toff had been a really good supporter of Daz. You know, really looked after him and social media and stuff like that. Did a lot of work for the the, the charities he was looking after and stuff. So, but yeah, it. If Toffel or Leeds another goal like that where he's right foot, I'll be surprised because he's left footed. <laughs> Even when he hit it, I'm like, buddy, oh, it's got in. <laughs> Did so, he go to Forest after that? But yeah, it, were, it, it it's, I don't get it with commentary because it, it, Yeah, Lewis O'Brien and Harry Toffel, the two people got tripped up in the penalty areas who should have been, who should have had penalties. Um, both went to Forest for ten million pound in total. I'm like, and that, and again, going back to your earlier question, that's that's probably why Town have just a lot of shot because we've just, God knows what's going on. Toffolo now is playing regularly for Forest, apart from when he's had his cheating ban for betting against whatever. And Lewis O'Brien's on loan at Middlesbrough, mm -hmm. and sometimes you'll see it yourselves that you get players who just take a sideways step in the career. And we think, oh, I'm going to get promoted at West Brom, or I'm going to get promoted at Saints Up. And it just goes completely wrong. And I think Lewis O'Brien would have been better staying at town. But he didn't. And there we are. You know, so. But mm. in regards to Wembley play our final, uh, final tickets, we got ours pretty well. But it's an absolute scandal what we're charging for pricing and stuff like that. And I feel sorry for you guys. Because I bet it will be some dodgy Coventry Man United fan. It was winners as a Man United fan in commentary end, but will be. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a joke. Now, <clears throat> what, what what sort of what players we're going to look out for? I mean, what players have impressed you this year? Even though you've had a poor season, have there any players that have impressed you? I thought, well, you know, are we going to look out for them maybe tomorrow? I, I think my my favourite players this season who have done really well. So Jack Radoni. Um, is is kind of like the playing maker in midfield. As young lad, we got him from AFC Wimbledon a couple of seasons ago, and a young, another young lad called David Kasumu. Very, yeah. The League One players who are coming into the Championship, and yeah. this is the first full season, so you know they've adapted really well. Um, Alex Matos, we've got him on loan from Chelsea. Again, like a defensive midfielder who would probably sit in front of back four. Obviously, Mikel Helic who's the leading centre-back for goals this season. Um, great from corners. And we've just got, we signed a new player called Balka, Radinho Balka, uh, mm. in January, who's a really, really good centre-back. I mean, obviously Danny Ward. You know, everyone knows who Danny Ward is by now. And yeah. I think my, my favourite, or my more consistent town player is with a young lad called Brody Spencer. Who plays for Northern Ireland? He's only 19, but bloody hell! If we don't get some good money for him, if he ever leaves, then, uh, then yeah. But unfortunately, saw so Thomas is out tomorrow, so it's about who's going to cover that area, which Josh Caroma could do. And then obviously we've got Delano Birdog, who mm. is either really, really fantastic or really, really rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of it, it's, it's decision making is 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 to behold. To be fair, sometimes sat with me and I can't. What, how did you see that? I mean, other times like how didn't you see that? It just it just <laughs> blows your mind. But, but um, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we've we've got a Japanese international place for us. But Jonathan Ogg cleaned him out a few weeks ago. Tori's hamstring or something stupid. So yeah. so he won't be playing. Funny that. that so, uh, <laughs> yeah, again, against Leeds, waiting for a stupid tackle on Somerville, and Somerville end up tripping up and tearing uh, Nakayama's hamstring or ACL or something like that. It's stupid. 
so. now we've, we've sold all our tickets tomorrow uh, well, what sort of crowd are you expecting home crowd there i mean we've sold all our way allocation what, are you expecting a full yeah. house or not well, it depends what you class as the full house. So, <laughs> town town stadium is twenty five thousand, just short of twenty five thousand. Last yeah. time it will fall, it will fall for an England against Ireland international rugby. Um, right. So, and that was like two thousand seventeen. <laughs> so, uh, if you've sold out, probably about twenty one thousand at most. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the problem is with what we have in Huddersfield is. Coventry is Coventry, and you got Birmingham, and you got Villa and Birmingham, and then you got Walsall or whatever. Yeah. In Huddersfield, you got Huddersfield, Leeds, Bradford, Man United, Man City, Liverpool, all within yeah. such within fifty mile of each other. Quite and, a lot of York clubs, isn't there? A lot of Yorkshire clubs. And town fan people live in town generally support Arsenal, or will support Liverpool, or will support <laughs> Man United. You know, so. I and mean, then obviously yeah. you got Stout Road. Yeah, you, you sell out every weekend, don't they? But yeah, our, our general gate, if you've saw that, it's going to be about twenty one thousand. Um, like, yeah, it's, but do you know it's a, it's a nicer way in. So there we yeah, are. yeah, I've been there a couple of times. It's not too bad. Uh, listen, Claudia's got a bit of a quiz, haven't we, Claudia? Yeah, you're going to test your knowledge. I have got the a quiz. Office, yes, not too taxing because. <laughs> okay, go on, All right. Ooh. Go on then. It's a, it's a bit of a history thing, just to you know. So let's, let's think of the good times. Yeah. <laughs> so question <laughs> one: How many times have Huddersfield Town been champions of the top flight? Three times: nineteen twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Ooh. Uh, it's interesting. They no, won it twenty-two, three... twenty-three, twenty-four. Sorry, it's. Uh, well, but they won it three three times in a row, and only Man United, Arsenal, Man City, and Liverpool have done the same. So that's, uh, mm. that's mm. quite an yeah. achievement. Um, do you know? Do you know what the ironic? Do you know what the uh, good thing about that is? Herbert Chapman, who won it with uh, Huddersfield yeah. in the season, Huddersfield won it the third time. He'd left to go to Arsenal, then he won it twice with Arsenal. So Herbert yeah. Chapman, as a manager, won the league five times in five years. Because I think when you run us up in the oh, two no. years, you didn't win it. It's not, I know you could yeah. have won it five seasons in a row or something. Yeah. And in uh, 1920, 1924, we won, no, 1921, we won the FA Cup. So that's, so, that's our four. It's fantastic. So it was 100 years ago, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back when I were a kid. <laughs> yeah. Question two: Huddersfield hey, Town with the history club. comes in waves. We've, we've got another wave to come yet. <laughs> <laughs> Question two: Huddersfield Town with the second club after Blackpool to do what? Playing all four divisions in two different stadiums. Oh, it's it's close. It's close. Cool. It's to it's to win all three divisional playoff finals. Okay. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um. And we won. We won them all on penalties. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We uh, last time we scored at Wembley was the two fouls, nineteen ninety one playoff final against Bristol Rovers. Um, we won two one, but the other times we've been promoted at Wembley have all been on um, penalties, and we got promoted at Cardiff right. as well on penalties. Mm. So, question three: Which former prime minister and supporter of Huddersfield Town was born in the town? Oh, um, oh, what's his? Not Herbert Chapman, Chuffinell. Um, Does any of our lot know? No, it's uh, right, it's right, at tip, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Oh. <laughs> Harold Wilson. Correct. I was going to say, Harold Wilson was my, my guess. Now, this one, the answer to this is so cool. I think this is so cool. President of the Huddersfield Town Academy. Say that again, sorry. Who is president of the Huddersfield Town Academy? I think Patrick Stewart. It is. It's Sir Patrick Stewart. Isn't wow. that cool? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. 
Pat- yeah, Patrick so Stewart's from Murfield, so Murfield's a little uh, village town kind of thing on the outskirts of Huddersfield. Yeah. I used to live oh. in Murfield, so so he's famous. Um, actually, just on Patrick Stewart, and it's not it's not town related, but the Murfield Stags, who were a rugby league team in the area, had um, Star Trek um, rugby kits made in the centenary season so we had this like purple and what yellow kit when it's star trek kit for patrick stewart <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's brilliant isn't it <laughs> <laughs> what was huddersfield's worst league defeat oh tomorrow 15 nil <laughs> <laughs> no Un- unfortunately i was poorly that day and it was 10 1 at Main road against Manchester City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1987. They um, yeah. the three of their players get hat tricks, three hat tricks scored, wasn't there? Or something it was yeah. Yeah, and do you know what we did to help us score? We give us a penalty. <laughs> 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 but we are turning up and we got a penalty at like last minute. So I'm just like, oh, at least you showed some sportsmanship. Yeah, somebody, somebody <laughs> had a bet, didn't they? I reckon. <laughs> Yeah, Troy Deeney or someone. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, question six. Uh, which player did Huddersfield receive a record fee of 15 million in July 2019? Oh, um, I want to say Terence Congolo. I've, uh, I've got billing. Oh, Philip Billing, yeah, he went to, sorry, he went to Bournemouth, so... Yeah, I, well, no, because yeah. when I was looking at it, I, I'd actually forgotten, for some reason, I thought he came through, but yeah. I forgot he was at Huddersfield. Yeah, I forgot that. No, no, yeah. he, um, he came through Huddersfield Town as uh, an academy player. Um, the story is, Huddersfield Town were in Denmark one weekend, observing someone else, and we saw this kid called Philip Billing, and bought him there and then. And then yeah. Bournemouth came in at, when we got relegated and bought him for 15 million. Do you know what? He's done one of the best goal line clearances ever in Premiership, is Philip Billing against Wolves. And every time you see a goal line clearance reel, you never see him on it. And it's disgraceful disrespect <laughs> to him. It's horrendous. <laughs> and I'm going to end up with some match facts. Uh, so the match facts covered 1 7. We've, we've drawn six. We've actually lost nine against Huddersfield. But Coventry haven't lost in Huddersfield since 1971, a month after we stopped using old money. <laughs> I'll just chuck that in there. <laughs> and of course... Didn't you lot beat us last season, 4-0? Yeah, 4-0, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but then you went on a run, didn't you, and he kept him up. Um, yeah, yeah. We, beat yeah. Um, we rattled some Blackburn fans because the, the, the game after, Blackburn went 1-0 up. And Town Tully were winning 4 0. And where I sit at the Gal Farm, or John Smith's, there's some um, hospitality boxes to right. And in front of me, there's loads of kids who wait flags. So I just kept shouting at Borough fans in hospitality box. So I shut doors and went inside. <laughs> I'm like, just imagine getting rattled by 10 year olds. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny um, you say that because Mark Robbins deals with the kids, doesn't yeah, he? Now? Yeah, yeah, he, does. he, uh, he celebrates in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what, right? If you play with feathers, you get your bum tickled, do you? Do you know, That's if right. that kid's doing that with balls and slowing it down all game and stuff like that, you're just going to go, ha, you know, and do you know what? He's come out and apologise, but that's what football's about. But do you know what? If if they'd have lost 2-1, you can guarantee that that Wolves manager would have gone up and shut that kid's hand for wasting time. Yeah. 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 Tough. So if you're going to be like that, I mean, what I didn't get is why the multi-ball system wasn't playing at the time. You know, so he could have just gone and got ball. Kids keeping on at ball and there's no ball on the cone. Yeah. So fair play. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're going to laugh at them. Tough. Maybe that's a life lesson for the young person going forward. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Quite agree. Yeah. And oh, I, just, I just thought their manager was deflecting off his team's loss, really. Just looking for excuses, weren't he? So he... He, you know, he went and had to go with the, the ball boy situation, which I thought uh, was a bit naughty, you know. But he, uh, needed, he needed to get his laptop out, Ken. Yeah, 
he well, needed no, to go down and get his laptop out. That's that's he what he needed to do. He didn't mention anything about that, did he? Yeah, no. I was going to say, yeah, it's unsportsmanship. Really? Oh, well, let's see what your goalkeeper did then. Yeah, the goalkeeper went down. I don't know if you know. The goalkeeper went down, basically, and then uh, allegedly injured. Uh, so all their players came running off the pitch. Next thing, the iPad was out, and they were changing tactics because they were losing at the time. Yeah. The keeper was still down with cramp, allegedly. Mm. Uh, we, and then we, also, they thought we were going to go three at the back and yeah. play wing backs, and we 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 fooled them. And Latibodia went into midfield, and we played yeah. flat four, and it threw them. Yeah, and, and that's what he did, Mark. He just he just told the keeper to go down, and um, so they can reorganise. Well, and then they I coached game. To be honest, I mean, there, there were two fantastic FA Cup quarterfinals that weekend, and I think oh, sometimes you just got to appreciate. Mm. What you're watching, it don't matter which team it is and stuff like that. You know, you, Man U, Liverpool, were fantastic. Coventry was fantastic. Two kind of regional derbies and stuff. And you know what? It didn't matter who those teams were. The games were just really, really mm. enjoyable games. And mm. kind of one of the most enjoyable games I ever remember town playing in until now. Well, when we first got promoted, we played against Blackburn, and it was Tuesday night, and it was two all what game, but the game were absolutely fabulous it was so good i mean sat there going that's what championship football is mm. you know i i watch football all over the place so i don't know if you know yorkshire but i went to watch halifax against chesterfield last week i've been to go watch um my local team liversidge against another local team called osset and just enjoyable football to watch and it doesn't matter who it is sometimes you just got to take away the team name and just appreciate what you're watching and you know fair play to country and you know what but robins will be going there thinking we can do man united mm. and every team at championship are going go on country go do it for us and then get spanked by city in final <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just wanted to avoid man city in the semi-final but because you know it depends what united turn up doesn't it you know at the end of the day it's down to on the day isn't it and that's what it's you know you just need a little bit of luck yeah, on the day yeah, isn't it isn't yeah, you just don't know which Man United team's going to turn up. I don't think Man United know which Man United team's going to turn up. But, <laughs> you know, fair play to commentary. Um, what, I did, what I didn't get is, and I said this to Claudio, it's like, what were the draw about? Like, they could have just said any team. It's like commentary are always going to come out first and you're just always going to play Man United. You know, and yeah. it almost feels like we want a Man United-Man City final. Yeah. It's like, where, where were... Where were the numbers inside the screen to tell? Well, we we, we we knew, we knew the numbers beforehand because we were told in the local press. But they normally announce the numbers on the telly. And they didn't for everybody else. They didn't announce any numbers, did they? They just done the draw. No. And then someone yeah. just there, just in a hat, just like yeah, just... number fifty-two. I knew, we number yeah, one. I, I knew we were. I knew we were number one. We all knew we were mm. number one. Yeah. But obviously, a lot of the viewers didn't. So yeah, yeah, it's very strange. I think it was an, an ITV cock up. So. Uh, they, uh, I also don't like the fact that the um, the draws getting done before the other two semi finals are being played. Yeah, finals was... have been done. I, I don't like that. It's it's the whole point of it is you don't know who you're drawing until you've finished. Yeah, you know, yeah. and yeah, it's, I, I find that a bit distasteful to be fair. Yeah, well, I agree. Should be done at the end. Yeah, quite agree. Um, right, okay, well. I don't want to keep it much longer, uh, Mark. Give us a prediction then for tomorrow. Come on. Oh, it's it's awkward because like, I was saying to Claudio for a week that commentary, if it had been playing last weekend on the back of a Wolves game, I think they'd have probably come up and absolutely knocked it out of the park. Uh, I still think we'll score tomorrow, but I think commentary are going to win just purely because they seem to have this such a togetherness at the moment mm. and i just kind of feel that they're on a crest of a wave playoff playoff semi uh, final last season and just kind of going with that and the fact that we're still backing mark robbins and mark robbins is doing great stuff and we've got the stadium back and all that kind of stuff and you know it just seems to be like a really good feel at commentary at the moment for you know and they've got some of the best shirts in the league for me you know and stuff like that just 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 feeling proud of what you're playing in. Yeah. Um, I have had a, I have seen team use 
from a press conference yesterday, other than one or two people, we should have like a full strength squad back. It depends yeah. on how they interpret what Andre Brighton writers' tactics are meant to be. And I still think they might be too strong for us. I think, yeah, fair enough, Rodoni and Kasumu might be good in midfield, but I think they could get overrun. But saying that, Casey Palmer, like like Claudia was saying, he's been all over the world, hasn't he, this week? And mm. it depends on jet lag and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm yeah. just... If we score first, then we might get something out of it. But if Conscious score yeah. first, I think we'll be in a way win. But um, the only thing I can be guaranteed about tomorrow is make sure you bring a brolly because it's going to absolutely chuck it down. Oh, so, I'll definitely have a brolly. And yeah, it, it's a cold, it's a cold, wet stadium if it's raining. But no, unfortunately, I think I think Coventry are going to win tomorrow. Just just on the just on the sheer fact that we're on such a buzz at the moment and. They're playing for the playoffs. Yeah. Um, we're playing not to get relegated, and it depends mm -hmm. on who's got the best mentality on the day. Right. So, what are you saying? 2 1? 2 1 commentary. Right. Okay. Uh, Paul, what do you think? Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to go 2 0 us, but yeah. in the background, I do have a, a little fear about after the Lord Mayor's show. Yeah. Uh, we've, got, we've, got think, on, we've got to be on it from the go. Oh, I mean, had, had you scored two, I mean, you look sharp in the United States, but it's a long way to come back, isn't it? Because yeah. we've had, we've got three of our players were out in those games, Mark. We've got uh, Latabodier and um, Palmer played for Jamaica, and obviously, um, had you had you right played um, for the states, so it's a the jet lag there. But I, th I think two nil to us. Uh, yeah. It, even with them travelling to and from around the world, you know, because the benches are so big these days, you could always have them as like twenty-minute players towards the end of the game. It's yeah. the fact that you've got those players to do that with, on yeah. considering who we've got to bring on. So we've got yeah. young players who have come through academy to bring on, rather than well-established players. Yeah. I mean, Casey Palmer when he played for us, um, it was great, you know, and. I'd love to have a Casey Palmer to bring off at bench. Mm. You know, so even if he doesn't start, think, he'll still yeah. be on bench. The massive difference, so Mark, has been in, in since Ben Sheaf's come back. Ben Sheaf in midfield is, well, I just, I, you know, he, he could walk into a Premier League side the way he's playing now. I mm. think he's, um, I think he's, I think he's playing brilliantly. So, yeah. Do you guys have fear for that, Ben? Like, if, if you don't go up this season through playoffs, but, Players like that are going to get stolen. We'll sell fifty million and replace them. <laughs> well, we lost. We lost. We lost. We lost. <laughs> well, Vix, Vix, possibly going to be a big dividend to us again. So, I mean, yeah. everybody's a selling club, aren't they? Other than yeah. Real Madrid. So, it, mm. it, you know, I think it, it. If you play well, your players are going to be wanted, and that's. As long as you get value, and I, I, I have personally in um, faith in Vivash and, uh, um, and Robbins that that they've already thought about that. I'm sure. Yeah. They seem to know. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. To two nil. Sorry. Well, that's you something you're going to think yeah. about this time of year because obviously season season's done soon in it. So you'll you'll be thinking mm. about who's moving on, who's coming in. You know. So. Yeah. But good luck to Coventry uh, play in the uh, okay. cup final, semi final. Because what I really want to do, Man United. Let's hope so. Uh, Vicky, Vicky, give us a prediction. Uh, I'm going to go 2 0 as well. 2 0, Carl? Yeah. Okay. Are you making the trip up to. Yeah, so if I'm going to get soaked up there, I want to see you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you up there myself. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you up there. Yeah, yeah. see you there, Vic. <laughs> yeah, cool. Claudio, what, what's your prediction? Uh, all the cats. All the cats back. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cats back, yeah. My prediction, I said on the other podcast, I just feel, because we've had the break, international break and all that, sometimes we lose a bit of momentum. Yeah. And uh, I think it'll be a draw. And I, yeah. not because we're going to play badly, just because of the, the situation and the weather is going to be absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Um it doesn't suit us when it's pouring down and rain, that's for sure. No. Um, 
And I, I just, Huddersfield got plenty to play for. It's so close down the bottom. You know, they're at home. I know we've not lost there since 1971, but we've only played them about five times, I think. You know, I, I think it's going to be a tough game and I think it'll be a draw. About a draw. OK. Uh, I think we might just scrape. I, I'm going to go for a 2-1 win, Carl. Uh, I think we probably will concede. We tend to concede. Um, but we have been scoring quite a few goals lately, so... Uh, uh, I think we've got to keep up in the mix as well. We've got two games over Easter. We've got Cardiff on Monday as well, so we've got to make sure we stay in the mix of the playoffs and concentrate on the on the league and try and forget about the FA Cup for now. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a two-one win. Um, that, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's like how many players are going to be like, I don't want to get injured. Yeah, it's an FA that's... Cup final Wembley against Man United, and yeah, I mean uh-huh. subconsciously we sat there thinking. We've got Cardiff on Monday, which is a long away trip. Are you away on Monday? I don't know. No, no, no. All no. oh, right, okay. And then you've weekend after it's like FA Cup semi final against Man United. So you, ideally, that game you want to put out of your heads, but it's not. Well, we, it's not going to get. We got, we got Leeds. We got Leeds before Man United. Is we got Leeds before then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a few I, games away or at it, home. At home. home. There's a comment from Wayne wow. Littlewood. Must win tomorrow, lads. Need to focus more on the league than the excitement of the cup. Always worry that players will not go into tackles as the fear of missing out on playing at Wembley. Yeah. Really, real tough period now. Each game is a must win. Yeah, of course. It's, ex- it's exciting. Yeah, it's wins just, wins wins just, yeah, it's just re- reiterating kind of what I'm saying. It's about making sure you're not injured because Casey Palmer's had, had his injuries and things and might he just turn around and say, look, I really want to play at Wembley against Man United. Put me on bench, I'm just travelling to and from round the world. Play. You know? He can't play. He's suspended. He's suspended. Is he? Oh, yeah. that's a shame. It'd be nice to see him. Came, he came, he won't believe this, but he, he came running on the pitch. He's substitute. He's off on the bench. He came running on the on the pitch after being taken off uh, to celebrate winning goal against Wolves and got booked. That was his second booking in the competition. And therefore, he's an automatic one match fan, but only in the FA Cup, not in the league. Oh, yeah, Claudio said it, it'd be better just chinning someone getting sent off, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 sent off, it would have been an automatic fan yeah. the next game. Wow, yeah. that uh, crazy, it, world, isn't it? I, I can't tell with the FL because I just think we're making half of stuff up as we go along. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, how, how can we just make a rule up this week? I'll tell you what, we'll. Um, and on Monday, town, unfortunately, I've got um, Rebecca Welsh and Graham Simpson as the referee and the assistant referee, and both don't seem to like us feel town this season. I'm not, saying anything, I'm not saying everything's the town players' fault or referees' fault, but it seems to be every time we come to. Uh, to town or to referee in town, things don't tend to go our way. I, so. I don't know who the referee is tomorrow. Do you know the referee is tomorrow? I don't um, know. Well, I can't remember. It seems all right anyway. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, well, when when you see some refereeing decisions this season, you just sat there and you're just like, have you read a referee book? Yeah. Yeah. You know, in case of, you know, it's just come up to the pitch after a, a winning goal in a regional kind of important yeah. game you've just got to use a bit of common sense aren't you and stuff yeah. like that well yeah how, how well well to, to recognize it's him out of all those people celebrating together it's like oh no you've just been you've just been so oh, no, yeah. i think it was the fourth official who pointed it out i don't even yeah. oh. realize well well the um i understand uh miles was telling me that um uh, certainly one if not two man united players ran onto the pitch when they scored the winner against liverpool and yeah. uh, neither of them were booked. Uh, no. Yeah. So, well, they, you, I know, I know Casey Palmer went the whole with them. When he really yeah. did. You're going to do it, do it properly. Um, <laughs> and, um, but it's, you know, they're, they're, again, there's just sort of this, I don't know. It's a crazy rule. It's a crazy rule. It? Yeah, it's just a crazy rule. You know, the two different, two different cards, two different sets of rules. You know, it, what do you guys think to the blue card? Sorry, I'm kind of just going on now, Anna. What do you think to the blue card situation? No, no I don't know if that would work. I don't know. Not for me. Not for me. 
No, no. I'd, not I'd, for me. I don't. They can't, they can't get the red and the yellow cards right, so another one's just going to confuse <laughs> even more. Team, I mean, that's the trouble, isn't it? It won't do what they want it to do because they can't win anything properly, can they? That's the trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So, a couple of weeks ago, I just feel town played Southampton. And a Southampton player went into a box and he got booked for diving. Now, for me, I was like, that's where the blue card should be. Booked for diving. Blue card, you're off the pitch for 10 minutes. Within that 10 minutes, Southampton went and scored twice against town. Yeah. And my argument, trying to explain it to town fans, was it's not what we can do for those 10 minutes. It's what Southampton can't do for 10 minutes. So if he's been blue carded, they've got 10 players. The potential chance of scoring two goals in that 10 minutes is reduced quite significantly. And yeah. I think the right areas with the right guidance, I think it'd be a good thing. But, you know, maybe Casey Palmer could have had a blue card rather than a yellow card and just to write yourself out for 10 minutes well, Mark, rather than... Mark, can I, can I just can I give you a counter to that? Yeah, we have a player in, in, in the sem in the quarterfinal, Callum O'Hare, he gets kicked in the face. Yeah. You can cool. see that his nose is up with a, with blood on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. VAR. Yeah, no, That's and a they, card, is that? So what chance have you got to get in a blue card, right? If they can't even, they've got VAR, the poor lad's on the floor <laughs> with a broken nose... The guy's yeah. foot is up above. I know he's not that tall, but he, you know, it was quite high. Uh, and they couldn't even, I mean, he didn't even get a yellow card. Yeah. And well, I saw it and like, that's a, red, that's a red card all day. And I referee on Sunday mornings and that, that's a red card for me. I'd, how he stayed on the pitch and how VAR didn't check it. VAR never looked at it. Unbelievable. What, yeah. what it was, was because you're not the Premier League team. Yeah. Um, and that's ultimately yeah. what it comes down to because anybody who saw that, I'm like, that, that's a red card. He's kicked him in the face. He's, he mm. looks high. It's a dangerous tackle. I mean, I've seen it God knows how many times in championship where you, you're a foot away from a player and you raise your foot and referees give it as a dangerous tackle. And, mm. you know, you've got a yellow card for it. And it's just like, well... Yeah. Yeah, we've so got. I'll, we've got, I got away with that. It's a disgrace. And we've got also but, our young Japanese international Sakamoto. God bless him. Um, that's what we're saying about. I mean, he, he basically was assaulted. Uh, yeah. The guy knew exactly what he was doing. He, he kicked crazy. him over his back, and he's got a broken pelvis. Or that's what we think. It's, um, and you know, mm. and the and the guy wasn't. He, uh, no, no, no marching orders. No, no card. No nothing. It was, no, and it was. He's got not a Premier League team. It was assault. It, it's, it's, it was it's assault. Disgrace. Well, so, I'm sure he, he can bring a personal claim against that person if he's broken. You see, I've got a theory where if you've put if you've gone in and you've injured somebody who is out indefinitely for a, for a long time because of an injury, you shouldn't be playing. You you yeah. should lose all rights to play for that football team until that person comes back or is deemed able to continue living a normal life by a, a, a external physiotherapy. Yeah. So it's like. It's like if you've gone in and you've broken someone's pelvis, that is a minimum six to eight re recovery period. It's, so it's, it's actually it's quite interesting because on the graphic, it's his body with uh, Claudio's head on him. If you look <laughs> in the middle, <laughs> 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 looks, like, yeah. looks like you're in the team, Claudio. Then I know. I've got Sims and Kelly on either side of me as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. It looks all right for my age, just Claudio, doesn't it? <laughs> but, but no, in, and, and I've said it for a while, if, if you're that kind of player who does those kind of tackles and you put somebody out for a long time, you shouldn't mm. legally be allowed to play it. Until, mm. I know there'll be contract law and all this kind of stuff, but mm. your contract states that when you're tackling somebody, you've got to do it with a fair and discretion, discretional manner and mm. you shouldn't be purposely out to injure someone. So if you put somebody out, out for a long time like that you've you've got to be looking at some serious punishment for the person also if they're cheating if they're diving fading injury you know you, players are now going to start getting some proper rep, reprimanded punishment because it's just becoming a farce and that Wolves player will probably get away with that and again and again and again mm. But yeah, I mean, that, that's, that, that's the point I was making Mark is the blue card in I suppose on paper or whatever seems a good idea, but if you think they've got two cards and they can't, you know, there's there's two examples there that 
they just couldn't even get that right. So I yeah. just think it would just make it so confusing. Going back to your going back to your example though, if that's against Manchester City, that's a red card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that'll, that'll be kicking. If it had been Jack Grealish rather than our, than our Jack Grealish, I'll just, I'll just yeah. say the connection there. Um yeah. it, it'd have been it'd have been sent off. Yeah. yeah. That, it, Without a doubt, and it's because of the Coventry City rather than Manchester City or Man United and stuff. Because in, in, in Premier League, yeah, fair enough, Wolves have eighth, ninth, whatever. We're still inferior to the top six teams. If that were against Spurs, potentially Villa, that's checked and he's off. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there'll have been some of that where going Wolves are at home. You can't, don't do it. Yeah. I think you need to get independent people who don't know what the hell's going on. To watch the games. Well, I think we've got that. I think we've got that yeah. already. The people who don't yeah. know what's going on. Get, get my mum to watch it. She's useless at football. It's my mum. She don't understand it. Like, but did did he kick him? Yeah. Is it red card? Yeah. Did I, like literally somebody who who has no interest in any of the teams going. Yeah, always well, kicked him though. That's a red card. Yeah. Now when yeah. somebody's interested in making money out of it or something along those lines. Yeah. Before we let you go, Mark, got a. Question from a Paul Thomas. He may have not heard you earlier. Mark, how did you feel about Moore as a manager and the departure of <laughs> Warnock? Well, when so Warnock started the season knowing that at some point Uddersfield Town were going to go get another manager, and Warnock were all saying were saying, I'll stay until you get your person involved. Darren Moore was the outstanding candidate and I'll I'll back in a manager and I'll back in a player who plays for town and whatever else. But after a while you're going, what did you see? How did did, did someone else write his C V for him? You know, just and again he comes off across as a nice guy, but I was just like, well he's tactically inept. Oh Sheffield Wednesday fans win. It's useless, mate. It's, 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 you're going to do an out of town. And sometimes in the games this season, we've drawn so many games because we've conceded goals right at the end of games because he's not changed tactics or whatever. I mean, so I were disappointed. Loads of fans were disappointed. Would we have kept Warnock? Yeah, definitely. Now, I just didn't get it. And when when he were at town and things weren't going right and he's won one game in about 10 games or whatever, you just start going, this isn't, this isn't working. This really needs changing, does this? And for me, they changed in five games too late because I think ultimately, unless for somehow we're going to pull a rabbit out of that in the next couple of games. I mean, you've got games against Stoke, um, Birmingham, Millwall, you know, really big games. And I think Darren Moore should have probably gone four games sooner. But I still think we should have probably just kept on a Worthington at the end of the season. Because Worthington used to be town's captain, he's the town's academy coach. He just had all the players on side doing really, really well. And then again, you make another change. Now, is that a transfer? No, yeah, a transfer window should up. He's had the international break to try and get across what he needs. But when you've had those players who have been there maybe two years, who have had six managers in two years, things just, you, you, your, mind will be, your mind will become clouded just by over information and over stuff and overthinking. And and I think if Coventry score first tomorrow, the stadium will just go dead and it will be rubbish. But I feel when Darren Moore came in, a lot of people win. He's, he's, he's not a winner. He's not he's not going to get fighting him to, to do what we need to do. And it, it just proved it. And then, I mean, I don't want to say horrible stuff about him, but you look at Port Vale, he's gone there after us. Five, five year contract, five mm -hmm. years. And he's been terrible, you know, so it just shows that we were right to get rid of him, but we should have got rid of him far too far too sooner than we did. Yeah. Well, to give yeah. a bit of comfort, Mark, we, we, we have a knack of getting managers sacked 
after we played the team. So we, you might. Oh, well, it, it, he'd already been sacked, so that's good. Uh, Brighton writer will stay for a while, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I think I think Andre's here for a while. Um, but Darren Moore, he should have gone. He should have gone against Coventry when, when we drew one. All we had back down at when what December or something. You know, it, yeah, it, he shouldn't have stayed as long as he did. He probably shouldn't have even been given a job, but he did. We backed him, and he was rubbish, and he got sacked. And but, yeah, I didn't. It's that simple, really. All right. Well, look, listen, we're, we're, we're running a bit beyond time now, so we're getting on a bit. I won't, draw, I won't keep you any... Uh, um, there's another comment here just before you go. Uh, yeah. Love, Mark. Is it Mark Cladio? Yeah, more. it's from more mix-ups. I love Mark's comments about players being out at the same time as players that have been injured on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah quite agree. Yeah. Hundred percent. Well, look. I wish you the best of luck, mate, for the season after tomorrow. Obviously, I hope you uh, get enough points to stay. <laughs> you know, after your players, obviously. And uh, we do wish you the best of luck. And uh, thanks very much for joining us tonight on the show. And thanks for your coming. It's been brilliant. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. I think. Um, I, I think. I think this weekend's pivotal for town. If you don't. If you don't get. Four points this weekend, and Millwall, Stoke, and QPR get positive results. I think that's it. Yeah, and I think Rotherham could be officially relegated this weekend as well. So, well, so yeah, we've only got two two places to play. From there, we? <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. interesting. So, oh, no, right. thanks for having us, guys. It's been good. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Ta -da. Right, okay, we're going to carry on. <laughs> Let's quickly do, because uh, nobody's had a look at Spot the Ball lately. If you're just uh, tuning in or if you just tuned in and you haven't had a chance to see the Spot the Ball picture, there it is. One ball to find. Send your entries in quickly and we'll uh, put you in the draw. More than one winner, we'll put a draw. Um, there you go. That's the Wolf game from uh, the FA Cup, so... There you go. Right, OK. Let's talk about Huddersfield then. Uh, Claudio, what sort of team do you think Robbins will play tomorrow at um, Huddersfield? Do you think he'll rest a few for the ones at international duties? Do you think he'll play them? Or do you think we'll see a few changes? It's a must-win for us, really, as well, isn't it? We've got to win. If we've got any aspirations of making the playoffs, he's got to pick his strongest side, regardless if they're jet lagged or not. Yeah, uh, I don't think he can take any risks. We've only got eight matches. Yeah, you know, and they're all cup finals, aren't they? It's the old cliche. Yeah, I, I think we have to go with our strongest starting line. Sims, right? They've got to play. No messing around. Uh, we can't afford to do it. We're not in that position, are we? No. Um, I'll just go. If, I, if he starts with the team that played against Wolves, I'll be more than happy. I was about to say, so you'd, you'd go to the exactly same team that played against yeah, Wolves? Yeah, I'll be, be more than happy. Yeah. Uh, I can't see who he could bring in to make a up front for, at the minute to make a difference. The two yeah. lads are scoring, aren't they? They are scoring. You can't, yeah. we've wanted them to score all season. They've started scoring. You can't drop them out of the team now. No. It's, it's, uh, to me, that sends the wrong signal. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Uh, Vicky, would you agree with that? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I suppose um, he's got a couple of options. He, he could potentially start O'Hare and Palmer on the bench rather than the other way around, which he's been doing recently, hasn't he? Um, yeah. If he thinks that Palmer is a bit jet-lagged. I think that there's no option but right, so he's just going to have to suck it up and get on with it. And um, I suppose with Atabodio, the, there's, there's options. Um, well, you, yeah, could put, I, you could put Matty Godden in. Well, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with Claudia. You can't. You can't yeah. We've got an attacking line that's working at the minute. I just don't yeah, think we have. And why change, change that? Yeah. yeah. Why change it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Paul, do you agree with that? I, I think I think I agree with what everybody said. I, one con. I don't know if this is controversial, but I'd like to see a bit more from Torp. Um, yeah. He 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 came in like a a whirlwind. 
and he just seems to be. We thought he was tiredness, but it can't he got, still be tiredness. He's, he's, he's got, got a, a bit of an injury, didn't he? He got a bit of an injury, didn't he? Um, yeah, he's got a bit of a. He, 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 reminds, he reminds me of me when I tried to do my first ever 5K dressed in a Santa <laughs> suit. And they said, they said all the runners at the front, I thought I can run. So I went to the front and I sprinted out with all the rest of the proper runners. After 800 <laughs> meters, I was dying, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then I managed to get through the rest of it. And I think that's what's happened with Torp. He did nothing for five weeks. No. He's, he came in, looks really good, and he is a good player. And yeah, maybe, it's just, maybe it's just caught up with him. It's, it's yeah. almost like the adrenaline's gotten through the first few games when he had to play. We had no options. Mm. So, uh, but you're right. I'd, I'd love to see more of him. I'd love to see yeah, more. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, that goal, that goal at Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, yeah. goodness me, I, I was just out the seat. It was wonderful. But... I'd, I'd like to see him and Chief in this, give them the run of games in, in the midfield. It'd be interesting mm. um, if, if that ever happens. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably agree with you. So, no O'Hare then tomorrow for you because he was on the bench, weren't he? That's Wolves. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy for him to be on the bench. Yeah. At the minute. Okay. Because we know he'll probably play in the final, won't he? Because um, obviously, because the situation with Casey Palmer. So, um, probably... we're in a, I think Ken, we're in a situation now where some players can swap, and it's yeah. not much. It's a much of a muchness, isn't it? Which is what he wants, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I mean, and all this. I mean, you know, Josh Eccles. I thought it was excellent. I mean, to be honest, it was, it was brilliant that, against Wolves. That that Wolves match. Yeah. Everyone was eight and nines, and there was a couple of tens. I thought, yeah, it was the best team performance I have seen for a long time. It's ninety minutes, and I've said this on another podcast where we've had games where we've been twenty minutes brilliant, and the rest okay. Well, we've it was a good minutes in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, we've had, we've had forty five minutes where we've been okay, but this is the first time where both halves we were solid and yeah. we looked the part. And I think this is why when we went two one down, you know. We we're all deflated because he couldn't believe it. And no, because we didn't deserve it. Yeah. And I, I didn't see any despondency in the crowd. No one was angry with the players. They were just like disbelief. Right. How are we losing? Yeah. And obviously we came good. Yeah. And there's a comment here which is dead on because he was, uh, sorry, this is from uh, Hector. Bidwell was solid as well. He was in that game. Uh, yeah. He was good. Um, Have we got, uh, got any more comments to go through before we... Well, uh, Steve McGovern, a fully fit talk, can't wait to see it. I think this is true. This is what we're looking for. Mm, yeah. yeah. We can give, uh, I can give out some... We've got, well, we did spot the ball, but we've got some predictions. Yeah. I've got uh, Callum Holton, 4-1. 4-1, yeah. Uh, Dave Saunders. Um, <laughs> I, think he, I think he won't be driving the bus for Leviton Warwick supporters down to Wembley, that's for sure. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's done in the past. Alison Berry, 3-1 cough, 2-0 from Hector. Uh, of course. See, Mark's like me. To, of course, <laughs> oh, cautious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Splinters, Splinters there, sat on the bench. Uh, sat on the fence. It's, uh, uh, Mark Cunningham, 3-1 oh. City. Um, and Webby Sports Roundup. Or two one cough. Evening, Webby, Tenerife. I mean, you talked about Bidwell there. That ball he put in for Kitchen, and I mean, Kitchen did everything yeah. he could. And I mean, the difference in the keeper. I mean, that's a Premiership keeper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That was. I mean, what a performance. Um, yeah. But you, I mean, that was beautiful. That was. That was. Uh, yeah, that, there's no doubt about it. Their keeper, and I, don't, I said this in the last podcast where I part. There's a guy, a Wolves fan, who's parked next to me. And he and he said to me afterwards, he said, you know, we should have been two, three nil down. Our keeper kept it in the game. Simple as that. He said, if it weren't for him, we'd have been asked, you know, we'd been dead and buried. Yeah. Um, and he was right, really, when you think about it, the saves he made. I just so, hope I just hope it's the start of something really good now for the last eight games. Yeah. Um, you know, because we've got a really good chance. I know we're only four points off it, we've got a game in hand. Mm. Got two big games. I mean, Cardiff as well, Monday. And people, and if you are say, watching on the telly, remember it's three o'clock. <laughs> In case you think it's at 7 30 tomorrow oh. night. <laughs> no, tomorrow is three o'clock. Yes, I was yeah, we're going. I hope it is. We're going. So, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, two big, massive games. And 
you know, we, and it's a team with the momentum. If you've got a bit of momentum, you know, and we've got the momentum at the minute, I think it, it, it breeds a bit of confidence. And I think we'll uh, <laughs> we'll score early tomorrow. I think in, against Huddersfield, and we'll I think we'll win comfortably. To be honest, I, I really do. But uh, I'm not sure <laughs> it'll be eight 0 though. That's the question. I don't know. If, uh, I wouldn't say that far. It's more mix up. Sheaf was nine out of ten, and Bidmo was bloody amazing. Just about yeah, Sheaf before we go. Um, there's a, uh, a podcast, a second tier championship yeah. podcast, and they're asking about which player uh, would they think out the championship could play for England. And the guy was, he raves about Sheaf all the time. He says, you should just take him because there's nobody else in the squad can do what he does, which is, I think, amazing. Uh, yeah. you know, so people are noticing him, basically. He is the best all round midfielder in the championship. Yeah. Uh, he is. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, and, and we certainly missed him. We know well, when he's not in the team, we, we know. That's the difference, yeah. Yeah, hell of a difference. Um, let's quickly do spot the ball. That was the picture. Uh, to quickly get your entry in now, you might have got a couple of seconds to get in. Um, against Wolves. Uh, we'll just go through. We might give you a couple of, a minute or so to get your left minute entries in. That's good, Phil. That's how you donate to George and John. Um, account number and everything down there. That's all the details. Uh, night with Noel Whelan, Friday, 5th of April. Um, Lee, Lee was on last week and he was telling us all about that. Uh, it's £10 a ticket, and the rest of the money goes to charity. He's got a comedian, and that'd be a very good night. And also, Jack is fighting uh, the day of the Birmingham game, that is. Um, but tickets are on sale now um, from tickets.co.uk. And the semi final, the tickets, as you know. They're on sale now. Two season ticket holders. Uh, you've got a week to get your ticket <laughs> next Thursday. Um, so no major rush, but uh, get in there if you want the best seats. Uh, for season ticket holders, tickets are now on sale uh, till next Thursday. So there you go. Right, OK. Um, have we got plenty of answers to spot the ball? Have we got one correct one? One? Yeah. Right, let's show you where it was then. Number 14. It's uh, oh. it's our eight it's our eight nil predictor. More mix ups. More mix ups. Congratulations. Yes. Number fourteen is the winning ball. There we go. I I took that picture, so I remember it. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, so, how can they contact us, Ken, to get the uh, the prize? Right. So more mix ups. If you'd like to email us on skybluefanstv at gmail .com with your address and your details and um, we'll get the mug in the post to you. Uh, if you live locally in Coventry, you might even get it delivered by uh, uh, by myself, not in, if it's local enough. If you're outside Coventry, we'll put it in the post. Um, so I'm not travelling too far. Um, so... <laughs> we're, on, uh, we're on Facebook as well, if you want to leave a message via Facebook. Or... Yeah, we're on Facebook and all the all the all normal uh, platforms. So, uh, But if you want to email us, it's skybluefanstv at gmail.com just with your details, tell us who you are, spot the ball winner, just gives you your address and your postcode and uh, we'll um, we'll get that muggle in the post or delivered to you as soon as possible. So there you go. So we have just one winner on spot the ball tonight. Um, are we all uh, got plans for Easter? What's your plans for Easter, Claudio, apart from the football? Uh, well, being a, very, being a good Catholic, of course, tomorrow's Good Friday. Uh, I yeah. sort of ignore everything that a good Catholic should be doing. <laughs> 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 now, I've got uh, family uh, going to fetch my daughter, youngest from Bolton on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. Got Sophia coming up from the eldest. She's coming up uh, from Andover for a couple of days staying here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Luca would be Monday with the football. So it's basically family. And then next, I'm off for next week as well. So I'm going oh, to time off yeah i've got uh the city we'll get down there in wiltshire hopefully there'll be some sunshine yeah get rid of this rain <laughs> uh, yeah. paul i know you'll uh, i'll be seeing you tomorrow at huddersfield you are and my mum and your mother yes I look my mum's to... watching tonight she said oh. that, she doesn't have some... so uh hello mum um and as, <laughs> as i said as i said before she lived in swan lane and her first season was 1948 Wow, so, uh, she's been uh, she's been watching Cov a long time, so she's looking forward to meeting you all. Yeah, uh, so yeah. And have you got it's, any more? Uh, you got any more plans over Easter, or are you just coming back and? 
Well, we were in Scotland last uh, for a few days yeah. uh, the other day uh, in the borders, which was lovely in Melrose, uh, which is a yeah. lovely part of the world. And so we're just having a chill, doing some gardening. I think if if, right. the, if, if the rain uh, holds out. Are you I'm going? The are you coming over for the? Are you coming down to Cod for the Cardiff game? Are you or? Uh, that's what I think I'm planning on doing, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going yeah. to come to the Cardiff game. So, well, hopefully uh, the rain will stop by then, so we won't have many more yeah. puddles. Um, <laughs> Tori, are you away on your travels? Or you, I know you're going to Huddersfield, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. I'm now back from my travels now, so I'm just football this weekend. Oh, so it's a football weekend for you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I hope hopefully um, the weather will uh, improve after tomorrow hopefully it doesn't look good at the moment does it but no. Uh, no. we could do we could do it within march now and don't forget the clocks spring forward claudio not back yeah. forward forward right? we'll bring uh Bedith up to time <laughs> <laughs> don't only, just only, only joking lovely people from Bedworth. before you get upset yeah, yeah. so don't forget you took uh, the clocks do change but it's summertime uh, changes on the Saturday night, is it Sunday? When is it? It's, yeah, when I wake up, it's done, isn't it? It's all automatic <laughs> now. Just as, <laughs> as a funny, as a funny uh, story about uh, Bedworth. Um, just, it's a nice story about Bedworth, by the way. Just a quick one. We were talking one Christmas about who we'd seen, the most famous bands we'd ever seen, and I was bragging that I'd seen Led Zeppelin, um, yeah. and I thought, well, that's it. That's Trump. That. And my auntie piped up from Nuneaton, my auntie Angela, said, um, well, I saw the Beatles at Bedworth Working Men's Club. <laughs> oh, right, OK. What there you do you do when was that? That's a trump card, isn't it? Yeah. First of all, we ever did Beatles, Bedworth Working Men's Club. That, that, be, that's got to be it, isn't it? Can't beat that. <laughs> can't beat that. No, that's, that's fine. That's You've done it. <laughs> Top trumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope we get top trumps over the weekend. Yeah, we yeah. six points. We need six points to keep in the mix and uh, keep our concentration on the league rather than the FA Cup at the moment. I know it's hard, but uh, we have to do that. And hopefully, fingers crossed, no injuries as well. So, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, Claudia, thanks for being on tonight as normal. Vicky, thank you very much. And Paul, as always, I'll see you thank tomorrow. You. Thank see you very much. Thanks very much for coming on again tonight. Thanks for all the listeners, the viewers, and all the messages. Without you, uh, we wouldn't have a, a, a show, of course. So um, thanks very much. We're getting uh, more listeners and more watches uh, every week. And we do notice these figures going up all the time. So whatever you're doing, uh, have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully the rain will stop. Have a marvellous Easter. And hopefully the Sky Blues will pick up maximum points um, over the Easter period. So it's a big play up Sky Blues. Thanks, Thanks, Blues. 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 See you on Sunday night. Uh, we'll see you Sunday night. Yes, back on Sunday night live. I'll be back Thanks. Sunday night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Sky Blue Fans TV. For the fans, by the fans.